You s and uh, here's a good, here's a wonderful example. Robert says, sorry? Well then, then we're talking about then we're talking about uh, unfortunately an animal that's not in existence uh, as often as it should be. Meaning, that my colleagues have a smaller and smaller space to be able to tell where a play is in context, and you can do a certain amount. Uh, and take a look at the newspapers. People want a hit. They want a meaning a, 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 a three second bite. They want to have a star system that will tell you, you should go and see this play because it got four stars. Don't have the star system and make the people read the review all the way through to figure out if the thing was good or bad or indifferent, where it is in context. Try to give them a little bit of history about the theater situation in, in context of the play, but that's not what, what Newspapers are doing anymore. Take a look. I mean, the Globe and Mail has a star system. The Star has a star system. The National Post does not. And so, if you want to find out what Robert Cushman says, you've got to read through a long, informative, brilliantly written piece. Huh? Get to mine. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break, you cute man. So, so, and and Robert would say, and and, and I was intrigued when I wrote re read his review of the monument. He would say that that Yana McIntosh is, can do much better. She's, work, she's not doing as well or as, as, as well as she could possibly be. She's got more power to do better. I thought that was fascinating. So w what else would you think we should do? All, all of them. Richard? Um, Lynn hit on a point, which is that, and this is actually not a new development. I mean, even, the, the British overnight papers do not have a lot of room to write. The Sunday papers often have more, but I read the British overnight papers when they come in and they, they historically don't have a lot of room. The New York papers did not have a lot of room to write. What you're looking for are think pieces, weekend pieces, uh, which again, one has to sometimes argue for and fight for at the paper and get. But on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, I have on a bad day 400 words and on a good day 700 words to write a review. That's what I'm given. We have no choice in this, by the way. I go back to the paper and there it is. There's the space laid out. I cannot, I think I'm doing a disservice if I spend 250 of those 700 words talking about my theories on Ibsen or educating someone on Ibsen rather than discussing what's at hand. If I have a weekend column, which I sometimes get where I'm able to go on about, you know, recently we've been letting down these productions in the following way and try to educate people, I like to do that. But on a day-to-day -day basis in our reviews, we literally just do not have, we are not given by our editors the space or the time to do that. I'm a bit dubious of whether you actually can educate people directly or whether you should. I think, I think it's actually done by indirection, uh, by providing a certain amount of context, but also actually by exploring or describing the particular show you're writing about. Um, I think, um, I just don't think that setting out to educate people. I think, it's, I think it's a byproduct if you're doing the job well, actually. But I don't, I don't think it's something you actually sit down and intend to do. I think you could be a bit insufferable doing that. Um, it is like you mentioned Bruce Dean, who I think is a brilliant man and in some ways has been rather a harmful man. But maybe that's a, maybe that's a matter for another, a private conversation yeah. sometime. Um, let me just think. Um, the space thing. Uh, well, the star system. Lynn, you said, you know, that's what people want is sound bites and stars. Or is that just what editors want? It's what editors think the audience Yeah, wants. That's, that's, that's my feeling too. I mean, I, I, I've, yet, I've yet to be convinced it's really what readers want. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm, I'm rather pleased we don't have a star system on the post. Mm -hmm. um, I used to write a lot of freelance stuff for the Globe. They did, have a, they did have a star system. And quite frankly, I enjoyed it. I mean, I didn't think it was a good thing, but given that it existed, mm -hmm. I quite enjoyed writing the review and then deciding, hmm, what would I give this? <laughs> and uh, I was notorious for never getting anything um, four stars during the things that I did on the Globe. Now, maybe this is because I was sent to second-rate shows. But <laughs> at, uh, at, uh, I, was just a, I was just a second string, you see, or guest critic, as I preferred to call it. But um, I think at the back of my mind was something like, well, 
I saw the Stratford production of Long Day's Journey tonight. Never got to write about it, unfortunately, but, you know, that was worth four stars. How can I possibly give four stars to something that isn't quite that good, even if it's good? So I always like to have something left in reserve for the wonderful day when a masterpiece descended on me, which, at the Globe, it never did. There have been shows I've reviewed at the Post, which I certainly would have given four stars to had we had that system. Now, something that might interest you, I'm not quite sure why, as well as reviewing Lord of the Rings for the, for the Post, I also reviewed it for The Guardian. And they, to my horror, because they didn't have it in my time, do now have a star system. And I was told, will you please um, you know, give us a star rating out of five? And I gave it four. And they wrote to me and said, look, um, your review doesn't read like a four-star review. You read like you really think it only deserves three, so we're going to give it three. <laughs> I didn't realize the editors had that uh, discretion, but you know, what the hell, it's a one-off piece for me. I'm not going to make waves about that. Maybe they're right. Um, very interesting. There could be sort of something subliminal that sticks out from behind you, from behind your prose. Um, I mean, what I would say in the, in the case of that particular show is, I can see as I, I can, as far as I can see, there are good things about it, and there are flaws about it, and uh, the good things to me add up to would add up to four stars out of five. But if, because of my nature, I spend more time on the flaws, I can see why people wouldn't get that. So uh, there you are. Um, I think readers are actually capable of being a lot more intelligent than a lot of people give them credit for. And uh, I think without necessarily setting out to educate them, I think uh, they are capable of following reasons and hearing the basis for opinions and evaluating them. Uh, that's, that's what I'd like to think, and it's, I think, the only way any of us can write anyway, you know, to do as much justice as we can to our own intelligence and assume that uh, the people reading us are, are intelligent too. And I really don't see why they shouldn't be. So I'm afraid we've only got time for one more, and uh, there was a young lady there. You still got a question? Uh, sure. Um, I suppose the initial extension of the question that was just asked, uh, but with a little rephrasing, Mr. Zane is the author of the problematic issues with the staging that have been going on in Toronto Theatre lately, and you're mentioning sort of about workshopping and, and uh, the place not being given enough time and previews and things. I just wondered how frustrating it would get. You all seem to agree that your commitment as reviewers was to your audiences who were reading your reviews and as, you know, extensions of the audience yourself. But I was wondering if for the sake of the development of the Toronto scene in general, um, does it get... Do you feel it would be beneficial or does it get frustrating to consistently review companies' works that time and again speak to, like, have, seem to have the same problems that you feel could be remedied by uh, maybe a more general review of the system as a whole that we're working in right now or of the company operating as a whole? And I know that's, uh, you know, you're just talking about not having enough time for a think piece per se. No, what, what I, I hear you, and what we have to do is much like what Cato did in the Roman Senate when he kept standing up and saying Carthage must be destroyed, and everybody laughed at him, and he would keep getting up and saying Carthage must be destroyed, and finally they went and tried to destroy Carthage. Uh, I believe that if we keep telling Marty Bragg that the play development process at Cannes Stage is inferior, and if enough people keep saying it, sooner or later, either he's going to listen or his board of directors will go to him and say, Marty, what's going on here? You know, how come the Globe and the Star, and I don't know if Robert's joined in on that too, but the Sun has even done it, and I don't know if Lynn has done on, on CBC, say, how come these new plays aren't good here? I wouldn't dare. <laughs> that's right, you like getting back there. But that's our only hope, is that you can eventually go at things. Uh, I, I have been credited with having replaced one regime at one theater in the city, and I don't want to take credit for it, but, you know, because I, I kept harping on the inferior quality of the work that was going on under a certain artistic director, and eventually said artistic director was fired. Uh, that's all we can do is to say, this is the problem, we have to keep pointing. We can never say so-and-so must be fired. That's not our job. But you can say, you know, again, once again, what we thought was going to be good isn't. And it's this reason. Once again, we thought what should have been good isn't. And it's this reason. And eventually, the mills of the critical gods don't grind that slowly, but they do grind. And that's what the only thing we can hope for. Yeah, I mean, it's analogous to a rule of my own, which is you should not say you should not say X is a terrible actor. You can say X, is a ter X gives a terrible performance. And I suppose if you say it time and time again, then I suppose this adds up to saying X is a terrible actor. But it's not quite the same thing. I think you have, always have to allow the lee somebody the leeway to be better next time. You never know. They might be. And although I don't think 
we're in the job of being kind to people. I think there's something. We're not in the job, I think, of, destroy, of destroying people's dignity. 